Welcome, Jeff Zwerink here, and I'm glad to have you joining us. And I'm also joined by a good friend and colleague, Ken Walgamuth. He's a geologist, has been working in the field of petroleum geology for more than three decades, and is also the founder of Solid Rock Lectures. And we're going to be looking at how radiocarbon can inform what we know about biblical archaeology. Ken, it's good to have you here again today. I'm so pleased to be here because my wife and I have been working for years to get here and we're finally here and we well, appreciate it. It's great to have you here and I'm excited about our conversation today because you know radiocarbon dating and radioactive dating just in often in the church is kind of viewed with a lot of skepticism. It kind of has a bad rep if you will, which I find interesting because that is one of the tools that we often use to help us understand biblical archaeology and date things out of the Bible. So kind of lay out the, give us a picture of the landscape. What does it look like and how do we use radiocarbon dating to inform our biblical archaeology? Okay, well biblical archaeology has a time frame back to about 8000 BC mm -hmm. or in my geological reference, I'll use the references to 10 to 11,000 years okay. or back to 14,000 years. Um, our capacity to understand the history of radiocarbon in the geological system primarily in this period comes from tree rings right. because radiocarbon is produced in the upper atmosphere, is taken into trees as the leaves do photosynthesis and the rings in the trees are formed with fresh radiocarbon and then from previous years of that tree mm -hmm. growth the radiocarbon decays away slowly by its characteristic half-life of 5,730 years. So, so in each tree ring, it's going to be, each ring is going to start with the atmospheric radiocarbon, and then once the next year goes, the radiocarbon in the previous tree rings is going to start decaying away. That is correct. Okay. And the decay away gives us the opportunity then, I'll give the principle now and then we'll repeat it later, is that with an unknown sample, we will collect a sample, determine the amount of radiocarbon that is in that biblical mm -hmm. artifact, and then go compare it to the amount of radiocarbon is, that is in this long sequence of tree rings mm -hmm. that we have collected. So, so that, that allows us to take a biblical artifact and then put it on this scale, and then by counting the rings we can say, oh, it's this old. That's the basic process? Perfect. Okay, Perfectly right. said. Thank you. <laughs> right. Now what I do have to describe, however, is that the oldest living trees today are about 8,000 years that, uh, excuse me, about 5,000 right, years right. Okay. in uh, bristlecone pines in California. Mm -hmm. So a key part of the process is, d is doing what geologists call cross-dating. Mm -hmm. That is, we take a living tree and compare it to wet and dry seasons of trees that are dead okay. and match the dead tree for a window of growth of these wet and dry seasons mm -hmm. like barcode to confirm that those rings of the living tree in fact grew in the same years as the dead tree. So, so by doing that we get this continuous, so even though there's only a 5,000 year old tree we can count all those rings and get a continuous record back 14,000 years is what you're saying. That is correct. Okay. Now the longest uninterrupted record comes out of Europe mm -hmm. from the European oak trees. And geologists are, I guess I'd have to say, kind of crazy because they have dug up thousands of tree trunks mm -hmm. from the mud of the rivers of, in Europe and they've put together an uninterrupted sequence that's like this that does go back to 14,000 years. So ultimately this demonstrates that the Earth is at least 14,000 years old. So, okay, so, so we've got that record, we've got some biblical artifacts that we can now go align with that record and get some dates. So what are some of the things that we've been able to date and does it affirm or contradict what Scripture says in terms yeah. of when these things happen? So uh, let me give sort of a visual description of what that curve looks like. So at present time it's going to be 100% of modern carbon and it gradually decays back with time back to say four to five thousand years of the ones that mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about. So an artifact, we measure the amount of carbon in today, we go back and we find out how many, how, what is the age, what's the tree ring count at that amount. Mm -hmm. And the two examples, I'll first start with the Dead Sea Scrolls, that's been done with the Dead Sea Scrolls and it 
matches, the amount of radiocarbon in them matches with the tree ring count window about 2,240 years ago. So, okay, so that puts it before the time of Christ. So what is the significance of it being 2,000? 200, 200 years 200, ago, 200, it's before years ago, right. The issue is, is that certain uh, scholars that are tech to be skeptic about the truth of scripture mm -hmm. or that it comes from God imply that the Dead Sea Scrolls were probably written after the time of Christ. So this, so this dates it. This dates gotcha, it. This okay. gives the Dead Sea Scrolls a date before. Right. What, what other sorts of artifacts uh, do, can we weigh in with? Okay. The one of the most fascinating ones is that Hezekiah in Second Chronicles is recorded as having dug a tunnel mm -hmm. from the Gihon Spring to what is the Pool of Siloam. And modern day geologists have gone into that tunnel. They've observed that it's been coated with plaster and in the plaster they, were they found a tree limb, okay. a piece of wood. Right. So they took the wood, they went out and they did radiocarbon. They measured the content of radiocarbon mm -hmm. in it. They went to this curve from the radiocarbon data from tree rings and they count that back to 2,700 tree ring count or 2,700 years, which puts it about 700 years BC, consistent with the biblical record. That's pretty remarkable. I mean, it's not surprising, but it is remarkable that it yeah. works out that well. Yeah. So, I mean, do we just have these two examples or are there more? Uh, there's a lot, a lot of work that's done with radiocarbon and biblical archeology span that becomes a lot, uh, more complex, but I'm giving you some simple conceptual mm -hmm. ideas. Right. Uh, work has been done with hundreds and thousands of samples to distinguish which centuries BC Solomon and David lived in. Mm -hmm. And at home I have a book, you know, a two, 300 page book of the specialty group of radiocarbon specialists who work in this area of biblical archeology. span so we really do have literally hundreds and thousands of archaeological events that we can date with radiocarbon dating and they line up and affirm what scripture is saying about the timeline of when things happen. They work out very well with the respective uncertainties that happen with scientific investigations which are part of, part of the process of doing science as you well know as an astronomer.